Uh, good evening. It is Monday, April 1st, and I'm calling a meeting of the Personnel Administrative Affairs Committee to order. The time is 7 p.m., and we are in the Aldermanic Chamber. Would the clerk please call the roll? Alderwoman at large, Shoshana Kelly, Chairwoman. I, I am here. Alderman at large, Ben Clemens, Vice Chair. Here. Alderman Ernest Jetty. Here. Alderman Thomas Lopez. I'm here. And Alderman Tim Sennett is here. We have five in attendance. Also in attendance is <laughs> Alderman Clee. Um, and City Clerk Dave Lee. Thank you. <laughs> Those words. Um, the mayor will not be able to attend. All right, we're gonna go into public comment. There is no public here. Um, communications, without objection, I'll suspend the rules to accept um, a communication from the city clerk um, and place it on file. For interviews, both of our interviewees are unable to attend this evening and we will be interviewing them in our May meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, application to license hawkers, peddlers, interrent. Someone needs to help me with that. Interrent. Vendors license. There are none. Interrent. Okay. Interrent. Appointments by the mayor. <laughs> I'll get it right by the end of this. I'd like to make a motion to recommend the following reappointment to the Downtown Improvement Committee. Mary Lou Blaisdell and Richard Lannon, both with terms to expire December 31st, 2026, to recommend the following reappointment to the Business and Industrial Development Authority. Carl Andrade, with a term to expire September 13th, 2025, to recommend the following reappointment to the Arts Commission. Jennifer Anand, with a term to expire February 1st, 2027, to recommend the following reappointment to the Hunt Memorial Building Board of Trustees, Charles Matthews, with a term to expire December 31st, 2028. You've heard the motion. Is there any discussion on that motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any approved? <coughs> any opposed? <laughs> that motion passes. Unfinished business. There is none. New business resolutions. Uh, R24033 proposing an amendment to the city charter relative to adding two additional members to the Board of Health. The maker of this motion has requested that we table it um, for the public hearing on the 22nd of April. I'm sorry. That we table it for what? We're having the public hearing on April 22nd. So the request was to table it until after the hearing. I haven't made the motion if you'd like to talk on it. <clears throat> okay. I think well, we need to make the motion to talk on it. <laughs> I mean, once it's tabled, once we say table, we can Oh, uh, you're right. I got gotcha. you. Did you want to speak on an Alderman Jetty? Should I put it on the floor so we can at least speak on it? So, um, yes, I'd like to say something about sure. that if I can. Go ahead and make a motion. Um, All right. I would like to make a motion to recommend final passage of R24033. Alderman Jetty. Thank you. So, um, you know, I heard what you said about the maker uh, or the, the main sponsor uh, requesting that it be tabled uh, until after the public hearing. And, you know, and since, since he's not here and no one else is here to talk about it, obviously we, we you know, it doesn't make any sense to talk about it tonight. But, um, you know, I'm sorry that, that this is happening. I thought that this would be an opportunity uh, for uh, the main sponsor and uh, you know, to, to uh, explain to us you know, his reasons you know, behind uh, you know, making this, uh, this proposal. Um, you know, I'm, I'm in favor of it. You know, I think it makes a lot of sense. Uh, but I think that um, you know this is this is an opportunity to educate the uh, other aldermen and the public, you know, about the reasons for for doing this, and uh, you know it you know, the whole thing about uh, you know the charter change 
as explained to us by the uh, Corporation Counsel, uh, you know, he explained that the quirk, there's a quirk in the state law that requires that we first find that um, uh, that, it, that it's necessary to make a, car, a charter change. And uh, we, uh, we went through this with the, uh, the uh, when the, you know, the, the proposal to change the, the makeup of the police commission. Um, you know, it doesn't, it just, uh, it just never made any sense to me that we would vote to, to make a determination that a change is necessary without ever having spoke, uh, talked about it, you know, without ever having discussed it. Uh, you know, we, when we went through the, the police commission, I, I raised the same issue, but um, you know, at that time, it, you know, it was just explained. Well, this is a quirk in the law, and this is the way it has to be done. But that time, we we didn't have a choice. We had to find it was necessary in order to move it along. This time, corporation council said, "Well, you don't have to." <coughs> vote that it's necessary tonight, you can refer it to the committee and have a discussion and then come back and, and, and vote on it. But eventually, in order for it to go forward, we, we have to vote to, you know, that we find it's necessary. And, you know, I'm not opposed to it. I think it's, it's a, it sounds like a, it's a good idea. I know that, um, Having experience with uh, with the uh, Board of Health and, and uh, on the mask issue during COVID, uh, there were times when uh, they had trouble coming up with a quorum, um, and you know, with only three members, uh, you know, lots of times, you know, one of the members had you know is is a practicing pediatrician, he had patients to see, he had to leave uh, before the meeting was over, and so that left you with two people, you know, making these decisions, and, and I thought they made excellent decisions. I think the current members of the Board of Health have done an outstanding job, but, I, you know, I think it would benefit, you know, them and the board and, and the public health department and the public, you know, if they had more people to make sure that, that they would be able to uh, have a quorum. And the suggestion, you know, that we have a, a nurse and um, a social worker, you know, represent skill sets, which, you know, makes sense to me that we would, that we would have that. And the, uh, the sponsor, you know, says that he has, uh, uh, you know, evidence that you know, this is the best practice to have these you know, areas of expertise represented. So uh, I was looking forward to hearing more about that tonight. So um, you know, I I don't think we can do anything other than table it tonight. But I, I just wanted to make my thoughts known. And you know, I, I think it's a mistake for us to. You know, so so now we're going to have a public hearing without any exposition of, you know, of, or any discussion of why we're we're going forward with this. Um, you know, the, there'll be a brief presentation. I mean, we've all been at these public hearings. There's a very brief presentation, and then the public gets to talk. And uh, you know, will the public? be educated enough to talk intelligently about this and, and to give us the benefit of their of their thinking you know without a um, you know a true exposition of the reasons uh, that this is a good idea <coughs> so thank you for allowing me to, to say that alderman lopez um so i'm sure alderman jetty and clee and clemens and kelly remember um, I did a very similar piece of legislation the same night we did the police commission, um, and I retracted it. Um, and sort of what was going on behind the scenes was accusations were being made to me that I hadn't talked to the Board of Health about it. They were taking it very, very personally. They were using words like 
betrayal and you know trust and all that kind of stuff. Um, and <clears throat> I said for the record, I had in fact tried to put it on the meeting agenda for three months pri previously, um, and I had emails where I requested that. And if if there had been verbatim minutes at the time, it would have been clear like at the end of the meeting preceding that I was trying to put it on the I was trying to have a discussion, and they had to go. They were too busy with other stuff. And I had pointed out to them that in that case, unlike this one, we were running out of time to actually put it, uh, do the public hearing, do the, the motion before the alderman, have it go to the committees and all that stuff, before we hit the deadline for how quickly the city could actually put it on a ballot. And <clears throat> I was basically told at that meeting just before it that the Board of Health was planning on uh, taking a recess the following month so it wouldn't be heard in time. Um, so I think because of the sensitivity of the issue and because there's been a lot of pushback from the board informally already with regards to this, um, Alderman Moran is trying to be sensitive to their feelings and he's trying to meet them you know, at the data level. And so he's working on a presentation. He wants to show evidence-based practices and best practices, um, all very consistent with what they espouse on their own as a as a Department of Health that is overseen by that board. Um, the best practices are pretty self-evident, but he wants to recognize the work that they've done and the role that they have right now and try to be as respectful as possible while maintaining, obviously, we all have um, <clears throat> our own eligibilities as elected officials and as aldermen to, to do exactly this. Like, this is what we're here for. This is what our roles are. If we feel like things need to change legislatively, that's our purview, and we were elected to do that. So while he's trying to make sure that he's sensitive to the feelings that they have, um, it doesn't really hurt to just wait until after he's presented at the Board of Health and you know had that public um, hearing as well. So I think that was what the, the thought was, um, and he just didn't want to like try to ram it through while being accused of such because last time that was essentially what happened um, on to me as I was I was told by the Board of Health that I was pushing this, these things through everything was still very sensitive because of COVID you know the public needed to have trust in the board and I never thought it was a trust issue I never thought in any case trying to add more expertise or oversight I just think it needs to be looked at and particularly in both scenarios the board doesn't make the decision the people do, but making sure that the people are presented with a fair um, representation of this, um, particularly that the Board of Health doesn't decide that it feels so strongly about this that they will go out and educate the people themselves. We really want to avoid any kind of a, a back and forth that distracts from the issue like we saw with the police commission because it was very much no longer about the issue as that proceeded. And this doesn't need to be anything like that. There's plenty of time to do it. There's plenty of time to process it. and. Um, there is time to explain the, you know, the different systems. So um, I think that's the thinking here. Did you have a motion? Alderman Glutz. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, <clears throat> just to add one extra piece to this, um, you know, we, we have in, in Nashua more opportunities for the public to engage us than I think probably any other city in New Hampshire. Um, we had they, somebody who was interested in this could have come tonight to speak about it because it was on the agenda. Um, they can come to the public hearing. They can come, I don't know if the Board of Health has a public comment, but they could certainly solicit them. They can solicit us. <coughs> they can come to the meeting when this reappears on our agenda. And in addition to that, if this goes forward and is on the ballot, they're gonna have the ultimate say by voting it up or down. So while I understand that there is some concern about the process, I am not concerned about whether or not the public's going to have their say. Uh, with, with, so I'll leave it at that. Alderman Lopez. Uh, can I make a motion to table this until after the public hearing? The motion is to table. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? 
Okay. Bear with me just one moment. Of course. Next up, we have R24039, supporting a limited five-year bonding plan. I'd like to make a motion to recommend final passage. Motion on the floor is to recommend final passage. I did receive a message from the mayor's office that he was unable to attend this evening, as well as CFO Griffin, and they requested that we table it until our next meeting. Alderman Clements? Motion to table. <laughs> motion on the floor is to table. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? My motion is tabled. Wasn't ready for that one. <laughs> okay. New business ordinances. Uh, we have O twenty four zero one twelve. Or zero one two. Wow. Relative to the compensation of election officials, I'd like to make a motion to recommend final passage. The motion on the floor is to recommend final passage. <clears throat> we did receive um, that spreadsheet, and I know that the main sponsor, Alderman Clee, would like to give us her thoughts. To start off. <laughs> uh, thank you. Um, well, some other um, legislation to increase. Um, rates and so on may not have, have been looked upon as, as uh, favorably as I, <laughs> as I hope this one will. The, the main precipice of the, this type of legislation was a multifold, and, and we do have the city clerks here to answer any of the questions that may come up. But the main goal here was to, um, to look at the, each of the positions, the elected officials as well as um, the ballot inspectors and the registrars, and I'll call those the volunteer positions. Those people who sign up um, for those um, for those 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 positions, as well as those that come in. And the ultimate goal was to to look at them at a, a fifteen dollar <laughs> um, per hour um, rate. Um, and and the reason for this is that it allows the city clerk to be able to have someone for maybe two hours or four hours or 10 hours or 12 hours or 16 hours, whatever needs to happen, and it would compensate them um, appropriately. So that's really what the bottom line is. In addition to this, um, we've added the, um, the hourly rate to those that the city clerk um, hires or chooses when it comes to a, um, uh, a ballot, um, I'm losing my words here. Pardon? Recount. recount, thank you so much, um, uh, City Clerk Hilly, um, for a recount. Um, and that was just, <coughs> as, just as important. Um, what you'll notice also is that um, we're, we are giving a um, small amount um, to, the, uh, to those that go through training. Training, the best kind of training would be to have them on site and get in-person training. However, in the past, um, the city clerk has also given um, the, um, I'm losing my words here, it has also um, allowed them to do it via Zoom or remote or something of that nature. They will not get the stipend. I believe it's 20, I'm trying to see here, I believe it was $25 is what we, we agreed to for the, um, for the, for the education um, aspect of it. But to start from the very beginning, you'll notice that the word clerk, the moderator, and the selectman, their increase went to $400 for both the clerk and the moderator, and the selectman to $365. The ballot inspectors are getting a $15 per hour um, rate, is, is the way it's going to work out. On this spreadsheet, you can see, based on his, his guesstimate, what his um, total increase in his budget would be, which is about 43 thousand dollars if I if I'm reading this properly um, and I believe this is probably for this year um, where we're having a uh, general election I think that the person who has the most experience short of the city clerk would be um, Alderman Senate so at this point if it's okay with you uh, <coughs> Madam President I would like the uh, Mr. Clerk the Alderman Senate to to continue speaking 
if that's okay. Thank you, Alderman Klee. Alderman Senate? Thank you. Um, so this was one of the, um, the first pieces of legislation that I really wanted to uh, roll up my sleeves and get my hands uh, dirty with because um, as Alderman Klee articulated, this is something that I have a good deal of experience with, um, having spent a few terms over the years as both a um, award moderator, award selectman. Um, <clears throat> one of the biggest concerns to me that I saw over the past several years uh, during our municipal elections was um, empty spots on the ballot. Um, that was always sort of a, um, a common hallmark in Nashua. It, you've got three selectmen positions per <coughs> ward, and it had always been a little difficult in some wards to find people to fill those, but you usually had a dependable stream of moderators and clerks who would come back year after year, usually unopposed, um, to fill those roles. Um, that uh, those empty spots have spread over the past two um, municipal elections. We've seen um, blank spots for moderators, for clerks. Um, I know for a fact that at least a couple of moderator spots had to be filled by special appointment uh, this term alone. And so it's something that we're seeing up close, and it's it's Nashua's share of a of a national concern. Um, as recently as 2022. And in recent years, it's estimated that one in five uh, election officials had planned to quit the job before 2024. And, and we're seeing that up close here. Um, there was an estimate last year that I think somewhere in the market of, of, I don't have the numbers off the top of my head, but I believe it was somewhere in the market of 30 to 50% of election officials nationwide would be new to the job in 2024. So you'd be seeing new election officials diving in head first, with their first go at the job being a presidential primary, which is a massive undertaking. Um, and, and the reason for this is because since 2020, the job has gotten significantly harder. Um, it's often pitched as you know a 14-hour day, where you you know arrive on the site around six o'clock and leave at eight. But the fact is, folks are arriving earlier; they're leaving later. And they're spending a significant amount of their time before and after the elections in the months and the weeks leading up to it, planning, especially our moderators and our clerks who are working to staff their teams, make sure everybody's ready, make sure everybody understands what their responsibilities are. And so this legislation to me takes the total package of our clerks and moderators as selectmen and then our ballot inspectors and our ward registrars, which to be clear, because I've seen some um, some confusion on the matter, the, the ward registrars or deputy registrars appointed by the board of registrars who sole purpose on election day is to register new voters. Um, but this takes the whole package, and at least in my estimation, makes it a little bit more worth their while because the way that this job has evolved over the past four years was not consistent with what we were willing to offer folks to give up their time for. And, you know, we say minimum of 14 hours. That's only if you arrive as the polls start, which nobody does, and leave the second they close, which nobody does. I'd say at a minimum, 16 for a municipal election and significantly more for state and federal elections. So I, I hope the committee uh, is willing to support this. Um, and in my former capacity, I'm certainly happy to answer any questions I can in that context. Um, City Clerk, I had some questions around the document in front of us. It's just there's clarity, yeah. clarifying questions here. Um, I don't know how to best explain this. In your second column where it says state primary proposed, there's just a number. Is that number of officials? It's not captioned. Yes. Um, so ward, like if you follow across ward clerk nine, so there's nine ward clerks, so it's number nine okay. moderators, yes, so it's the number of, of people. And when you get down to the, the hours 20, so that's if everyone worked 20 hours, which they're not going, you know, not everyone's going to do that. They might do 10 hours, they might do eight hours. So that's the number, just to make it simpler, it's the number, if we had 48 people work, like, open to close until everything's done at 
um, 15 an hour. And my second question is, I'm just making sure I understand it. This, <coughs> it was 175 was a flat fee before. And now well, you're saying recommending to hourly? Yes, yeah, right? so what, okay. 175 was a flat fee, uh, but I'd get the timesheets back from some of the polling locations and you'd have some people work, say, six hours, some work 10 hours, and the ordinance only says 175 for the day. Okay. So then if you start trying to divide that up to what's fair, it, it becomes very complicated when yeah, you have yeah, someone yeah. there from, say, 6 a.m. till 10 at night, and then you have, say, someone there from you know, mm -hmm. 8 o'clock to 5 o'clock at night in the different hours. In, the only guidance really to go with for the payroll is it's 175 for the full day. And then what ends up being a half day when you have half day pay? Because mm -hmm. typically, if, like a, a normal work day, you'd work eight hours mm -hmm. and half a day would be four. Yeah. But for elections, they're working 20 hours. So you're saying that's a full day and someone that worked 10 hours is a half a day. So it kind of, the, the goal on this was to make it less confusing for people that are, um, signing up to work mm. and make it easier on our end for when we're paying them because it's, it's it's really challenging trying to decide yeah. what each person really should be getting because it's it's not clear so i am supportive of this i think our election workers really work really hard i just wanted to make sure i <clears throat> understood what we were changing and how the yeah. only other question i had around that is do you have any concerns about anomalies if you're now paying hourly? Say, for example, all of our voting machines go down, or there's a huge writing campaign and we have to count every single ballot. Do you have any concern about your budget being completely blown by you know, something like that happening? I don't think it would be a significant increase beyond what is proposed here. Okay. Um, there always are those instances. For presidential primary, we did have a, a write-in campaign, and we, we finished around the time we normally do. Okay, but that's a little bit different, too, with only one race on the ballot, so it makes it a little bit easier. But I don't anticipate it being significantly higher than this, even even with those scenarios. Um, earlier this year, the, the Board of Aldermen, you did approve uh, new tabulators. We're still waiting on those to gain the final certification. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll be reaching out to the vendor to see where they are in, in the stages. Um, once we get those newer tabulators, I expect a lot less issues um, with, with the, the voting tabulators. Another thing just to point out is the election budget is a budget that, that's going to fluctuate a year to year just yeah. because of the number of elections. <clears throat> so there's an increase this year, but then next year, the only scheduled election the next fiscal year would be the municipal election. So then you're going to have a, a big decrease in the budget. Okay. So it kind of go, it goes up and down. Um, so it's an increase in it, you know, for, for this year, in especially the general election with, with the president on the ballot, that's obviously the busiest election, the election we need the most staff for. So that's the high, on the high end for mm -hmm. elections. When you get into the municipal, um, it doesn't cost as much. We need less staff. Um, so it, it kind of varies year to year on the budget. Great. Thank you so much. Alderman Clee? Uh, thank you. I just wanted to, to add a couple things here. Um, so when you look at the ballot inspectors and you see 48, as, as the, the clerk was saying, that would be 48 full-time, we always call it FTE, full-time mm -hmm. employees. If for some reason everybody was a half time, that number would go to 96 mm -hmm. and so on. But if you look at the little spreadsheet <coughs> in yellow over there, um, just to kind of put things into perspective so you would see that there, that um, no matter what, the, the clerk, the elected officials are still going to be making more money than those that um, were um, like the, the ballot inspectors and the registrars, those that are volunteer. When I did this, I personally felt that we needed to maintain that that increase in the difference of it, even though I know they all work very hard, but for someone to actually put their name on the ballot and run for it, I wanted to um, be able to, to say to them, you know, I know it's not a lot more money, but it is something that's a little bit different. And I'd also like, um, if, if I can, to, to have the clerk um, speak to, I believe it was Derry that has also gone to an hourly, is that correct? So they were um, always hourly, 
uh, years ago, I believe in 2016, they were 750 an hour. They went up to ten dollars an hour in 2017 ish to 2018 and then um, in 2020 they went to 15 an hour uh, their moderator pay uh, went from 150 dollars to 500 per election hmm. so communities the larger communities are switching to um, a higher rate to attract people to work the election day um, you know some say high school students might have the day off and it's you know some extra money too if they come in and help us um, and, and other people that may have the day off but <coughs> they were finding during during 2020 it was hard to staff polling locations so they increased the rate um, and even now if you're following any legislation in Concord there's some bills on election officials and putting in penalties for people, election, you know, even volunteers for that day if they don't do things right. So it's it's kind of hard keeping the pay lower and trying to attract these people without kind of increasing the incentive for them, because we're under more scrutiny um, in the last few years too. So, Alderman Lopez, um, and Alderman Jetty, I saw you. So just a couple quick things. Um, First, just a point of clarification on what you just said, um, high school students, does that mean high school students that are over 18? Or can you be a ballot worker under 18? So um, anyone under 18, I believe 17 year olds can work as greeters and they can do, they can assist at the polling location <coughs> inside the guardrail, which is the restricted area, ballot clerks, handing out ballots, assistant moderators, things like helping the moderator, helping the clerk, that would have to be 18. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Um, sure. I can definitely see the logic of trying to make sure that we're, we're pinning this to an hourly instead of uh, a flat rate, uh, having worked the polls forever ago myself. Um, it's almost a disincentive to work the full shift mm -hmm. because once you uh, commit to that longer shift, you don't know how long it's gonna end. Mm -hmm. um, so I think where nerves might get frayed, people might have a long day, knowing that they, they are staying later but they're getting paid hourly, I think that probably is a little bit of a reassurance and maybe reduces the frustration and burnout. Um, I appreciate the uh, the writer of the um, the motions um, intentions in terms of making sure that the elected officials are recognized for the extra work that they do. Um, I would, however, point out that of course my ward has to be the one that had a selectman who essentially found out the day of that one of the positions was empty, <clears throat> staged what has to have been the smallest writing campaign ever, <laughs> and won with like three votes and debated whether or not we could do three votes. So it's not always a given. Um, and so I just want to state that I, like the has been said already, all poll workers are working, uh, whether they were elected or uh, hourly, and their, their efforts are appreciated and they're central to democracy. Um, to the, uh, the maker of the uh, original motion, um, I just wanted to ask, um, the previous uh, legislation was referenced where we pinned the compensation for elected officials on the CPI. Um, how come that wasn't considered here, or was it considered? I, I if I may, Madam, I, I think I, I did kind of uh, bring this up as to whether or not we wanted to complicate it, and, and I'm tied to the CBI. I am not against it. I don't. Recall, <clears throat> I know we had the conversation, and I, I think we decided against it that we would look at this every couple of years. The, the last time this was increased, I think, was 2016. So it's been Correct. eight. It's been eight years since it's it's been reviewed. So I don't have any problems with putting this in, but um, I think I'd like the city clerk to weigh in on that. I mean, I'm I'm not opposed to it either. I think we're looking at this as a good starting point to at least shift it to hourly, and then see on this rate see how many people we attract at the 15 an hour and see if the the poll workers. Um, prefer this over the, the previous um, way that we we're paying them. Um, I think that's that's kind of where we left it. Kind of like baby steps, I think. We just want to do one hurdle at a time. But I, I mean, I'm not opposed to, and to, no, to nor, that. Nor am I. I'm just not sure that we wanted to complicate things because we're, we're making such a drastic change from a flat rate to it. And, and one thing is that I said about the $25 for the, the training, we've never paid for training before, but we're hoping to incentivize people to come in and get training. I know it's only $25, but still $25 or $25. It, 
the, the majority of the people do attend the training and it's it's not that they uh, don't want to go to the training um, we have a, a training during the day and then we have an evening training and leading up to the election <coughs> with all the other responsibilities we can't be doing trainings every single day for for um, someone that can't make it so we do have the PowerPoint available uh, anyone that's new we really try to get them to the training anyone that's been doing it a few years um, they just kind of need a refresher and they can't make the training the PowerPoint's a good resource we do have um, moderators that will sit down with their people that they hire for their awards and go over some <coughs> of the, the more technical questions if they have it um, and I have sat with some election of um, workers in my office and gone over training but we do try to get everyone to attend the training but just with different schedules uh, it's not always possible and we don't want to turn down someone just because they couldn't come for those few hours that's right alderman clarence did you have anything yeah I or was alderman jetty next no Sorry. go ahead alderman jetty you're oh, right you. where i can't see you I so. know. it is difficult <laughs> just not um, yeah. So I have a, a few questions. Uh, so is, is there a, when we uh, start paying these people um, on an hourly basis, the uh, <coughs> is there some kind of an exception that exempts them from the, the labor laws, you know, workers' comp and all that stuff? We I did um, review this with the HR department, and there's nothing in in this that they think is going to cause an issue with that. Okay. May I continue? Um, Go ahead, Alderman Jetty. So I, you know, having done this myself, um, I know that uh, you know most you know, the, uh, yeah, most of the people get, as you pointed out, get there before. Uh, you know the six o'clock start time, or the you know, when the polls open. You know, you know, most of them are there before five o'clock. You know the you know, the moderator and the uh, you know the clerk. I, I I I haven't done it myself, but I've <clears throat> I've heard them talk about coming to city hall and picking up the you know, you know the ballots and supplies or whatever. You know, and so they, you know, they're doing that in the middle of the night, I think. <laughs> yeah, so th you? Th they're arriving um, anywhere between like 4 and 4.30 in the morning okay. is when they get the supplies. So with, with the, the people who are being paid hourly, the, uh, the ballot inspectors and the, uh, uh, and the registrars, but I'm thinking specifically the ballot inspectors who, <coughs> who are not elected, they're just hired for the of the day um, you know I know you know when I did it you know we were asked to come the night before you know and set the room up and you know, put out signs outside you know directing people as to where um, like in Ward 5 we changed the location from the main Dunstable school to the Nashville South <coughs> High School because of the construction at main Dunstable and uh, so we you know, we were out there in the middle of the night putting signs up, you know, trying to help people find the, the right place. So I'm, I'm wondering why, why not pay those people for that, uh, that extra prep, the prep time, the, you know, the day before, and then afterwards, you know, uh, you know I suppose you know, when, they, when they tear down, that's probably included in the election day configuration, but you know, what, what about what, why didn't you include the, um, the the night before when they set up the room and stuff? City Clerk Kelly. Yeah. So the history on that is that portion has never been paid. So when we were looking at um, making some changes, we were kind of focusing on what the current pay structure is and what can we do to improve the current pay structure. I don't know on the <laughs> setup how easy that will be to track they go at random times um, someone might stop by for 30 minutes to help on their their way home i think when we looked at it we were thinking that that portion might be too complicated there are some other duties that 
they do. It's usually the core group is the, the main ones responsible. From what I understand, it's the moderator, the clerk, the three selectmen. They're typically, and then maybe a few other of the ward workers. We, they do come in, they count ballots beforehand, they do a few other tasks. And our thought was kind of, we're trying to increase the election day pay to make it more fair for them. But we weren't trying to complicate the whole situation with, are we going to pay them for the 30 minutes that they helped set up and then the hour that they were at City Hall to count ballots? I think that's kind of where, um, what, what we kind of decided when we were proposing this. All set, Alderman Jetty? Uh, no, I have a, if I could continue. Um, so, I, you know, I, anything, I'm in favor of, of anything that helps uh, you know, compensate these these volunteers uh, appropriately, and um, you know when you know when, when I hear Alderman Senate, uh, you know, point out the difficulty in finding people to do this, you know, especially uh, finding people to run for the for uh, you know the uh, moderator and clerk selectman positions, um, but also you know the uh, the ballot inspectors, you know, that the, you know that the moderator has to you know, recruit and find, and you know, I I think that the reason that we've been having such a problem lately, uh, you know, is because of the of the the political climate. Um, you know, I've you know bef long before I became the, an alderman, I. I served uh, in many presidential elections as a voter protection attorney, you know, where I was you know, trained uh, in, in the, uh, the you know the voter laws, and uh, you were know, part of a, a group of volunteer attorneys who who uh, were assigned uh, to different polls, you know, to make sure that you know that anybody who was legally entitled to vote got a chance to vote. Um, and, you know, I, I, I have to say, you know, I, I was always assigned to some place in Nashua, and I have to say that the, uh, you, know, the you know, all of the moderators, selectmen, uh, ballot inspectors, registrars that, that I worked with, you know, were all uh, sincerely interested in, in one thing, and that was, you know, to make sure that everybody who was entitled to vote got to vote, <clears throat> and that the, the, you know, that the elections were run, um, you know, according to to law. And, uh, and, and I, you know, I, I always saw that. I did witness, uh, you know, people not not the moderators, the selectmen, or the ballot inspectors, or registrars, any of those people, but outside people, you know, trying to interfere with the process <coughs> uh, by raising uh, illegitimate issues. And, uh, you know, I, I remember one year I was assigned to Ward 3, and, uh, and, and there were some, uh, some people there who uh, you know, came from out of the blue and started uh, you know, standing be behind every uh, every ballot inspector, and they challenged every voter. And and, and as a result, uh, the lines just got really long. And uh, you know, the city clerk came. The uh, someone from the attorney general's office came. And, and put a stop to that uh, to, to that type of thing. Um, you know, lately it's it's got it's gotten worse. You know, with people, you know, making false claims about uh, you know elections being stolen. You know, people stuffing ballot boxes, not counting the ballots uh, correctly. You know, all you know all of that kind of stuff, and and, and the you know and threats. Uh, to people that we've seen, uh, uh, you know, recently, you know, have have made people, 
afraid uh, to, to, to work at the polls. You know, a lot of people are finding some way to cast an absentee ballot because they're afraid to go physically appear at the, at the polling place. Um, so you know, anything we can do to increase the compensation, to make it more attractive, I think is a good thing. Uh, I don't think it's going to necessarily solve uh, the problem. We have to find some way to recognize you know, that these people are really heroes. Uh, you know, they are what is making our democracy work and, and I, I, you know, anyone who is, is uh, interested in seeing how democracy works and being a part of government, you know, there are a lot of people who are sincerely interested, but you know, they just don't have the time to run for office. Well, this is a great opportunity to be of service, um, you know, to be on the inside of how the whole process works and to be and to be part, you know, of, of making you know an essential form of our democratic uh, government uh, work, and that is by volunteering to be a ballot inspector. And, you know, you, you don't have to commit to the whole day. There, are, you know, most of the I know the moderator in my board allows people to do you know uh, half days, and so this enables, uh, for example. You know, women who have children in school, you know, they can get their kids off to school, and then, or men uh, get their kids off to school, come to the polls, you know, work until school lets out, and then and then uh, you know be relieved by someone else who you know was working part time or whatever. So there, there are a lot of ways, you know, without having to make a full commitment for the full. You know, you know, 14 or 18 hour day um, that you know that you can you can serve, and we really need you know people to step forward and um, you know and and uh, <clears throat> tell the world you know we're, we're you know we, we believe in our democracy, and we're going to come forward and uh, and do our part to make sure that that it works. So. You know, I'm, I would, I will fully support this, and I think it's a, uh, you know, I think it's a great thing that you're doing uh, to the sponsor and to the clerk. Thank you. Great. I have a list, so I have Alderman Clemens next. <laughs> uh, no, I'm all set. Okay. Thank you. All set. Then I have Alderman Clee. Uh, thank you. Um, first, I, I want to make this very clear to everybody that while I probably the largest mouth here. Um, there are two main sponsors as well, um, Alderman Senate and Alderman um, Clemens, who each had input into this, and, and it truly was. And, and I want to kind of go over some of the things. Um, the city clerk, uh, Healy, did speak to the fact that we talked to HR, because one of the questions that Alderman Senate had brought up was, you know, if, if someone's only work, because this was a concern about whether or not we pay an hourly rate for the education or so on. And there's a rule you have to work two, if you don't work, you come in for one hour, <coughs> we have to pay two hours. That is kind of a state rule. So we didn't want to do that. We just went with the $25. That's why we didn't do this. And to your question about why aren't you paying for setup or paying for <coughs> that two hour rule kind of came into place. We played with everything. We, we, we took everything apart and then kind of put it back together to the best way possible. So um, those other things were actually going to very make things much more complicated. Um, and where the majority of like the ballot counting and so on were done by the elected officials um, or those that were put into the place of it. Um, that's why we didn't kind of go with that. But it was, it was a discussion that we all had um, between ourselves um, and uh, city clerk Healy spoke to human resources and so on. So it was thoroughly, thoroughly investigated. Um, we did go through many, many iterations of this. And I, to be honest with you, I think I increased um, some of the compensation from what the original um, city clerk had recommended. I think you recommended 12, I went up to $15 an hour. Um, and accordingly with the three, because I really felt that we needed to bring them up to at least a par. And, and so on. And one of the things that the city clerk had kind of mentioned to me, which I really kind of liked, was that there may be some people that are willing to take 
um, vacation day to work the polls. They get their pay for being at work because they're taking a vacation day, and now they get this extra pay too. So it kind of we were kind of hoping to be able to draw some people like that in as well, which is why we kind of went with this compensation. I know my husband also had worked the polls at one time, and he got the $175 from being there from early in the morning to late at night with one break in the middle of the day. Um, and by the time they're done, they're exhausted, and that $175 after taxes are taken out of it is nothing for all the work that <coughs> they did, which is, again, why we went up to that. So if someone does work 20 hours, they're going to get $300, no longer the $175. Um, and I want to add to what Alderman Lopez said. Yes, every single person at the poll is important. Our hope was that by increasing the elected officials, one would get more people that would step up. It doesn't mean that anybody's appointed is any less than someone who, who ran, but it's kind of nice to see people on the ballot so that the voters can speak. Um, that's kind of one of what the things we have to do. And to speak to interference, um, you're right. Um, my ward, the last few elections, I have personally been attacked to the point where the moderator <laughs> had to come out and basically t get police protection and come out and, and push these people away. They're actually putting their, li their lives on the line. And I know that sounds overly dramatic, but this particular person um, that I was assaulted by being spat upon um, more than just being named at and so on. So our moderator comes out and has to help with the police and so on. And then there are things, I know the last presidential election, um, where we have the rule of that you can't wear the um, kind of the person that you're supporting. You can't wear a t-shirt or hat or something like that. Um, there was a lot. The moderator at the time, and she's no longer there, I'm not saying that this is the reason for it, was basically at her wit's ends trying to fight with people who refused to take a red hat off or you know, wanted to have the person they were supporting walking into the polls, and that's, that's a no-no. Um, we had to get the attorney, we had to get representative from the attorney general's office to come to Ward 3 to, to deal with this. So they deal with a lot of things and it's getting worse. And I know Ward 3 is not alone. I know there are issues of Ward 2 and various other wards. Um, so I mean, that is really something that is extremely important. And just again, just to reiterate about the why we don't do to like the counting the ballots, so on, as was pointed out, it's very difficult to track. And someone shows up for 30 minutes and we now have to pay them for two hours um, for 30 minutes of work. So they were never paid for it before. We've increased this as an incentive and so on. So I think the baby steps and whether sometime down the road we tie it to CPI, that would be, you know, maybe something that'd be nice, but let's see how this works first. And then we can um, kind of move forward to that. And I think that's really all I wanted to say. Thank you so much for allowing me to speak. Motion on the floor is to recommend final passage. Is there additional discussion? Just a little bit more. <laughs> Alderman Senate. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. I'll try to be brief. <laughs> um, just to uh, sort of respond to a couple of things that came up in the discussion, uh, Alderwoman Clee took care of what I wanted to say in regard to the um, New Hampshire state law that requires a two hour minimum if you're called into work for any additional duties. So that's the rationale that we put behind there. Um, just to further contextualize that logic and some of what made me agreeable to it was that, <coughs> um, at least in my purview as a former moderator, it's the core responsibility as part of the stipend for your five elected officials, your three selectmen, your clerk, and your moderator, that's what you take on when you take on the job. You take on the setup. You take on the ballot counting ahead of the day, and then you take on election day. Those jobs, the, the, particularly the setup, the ballot counting, it can be done by those five elected officials. Um, more hands makes for lighter work, and you know we, they could certainly always encourage those folks to join them. But at least the way I see it, mandatory for those five. If you can get more hands willing to volunteer a bit of their time, great. It'll probably take half an hour, 45 minutes to count the ballots. We're usually out of there in about an hour for setup. Um, in regard to some of the questions that were brought up in terms of, you know, if we have a write-in campaign, something to that effect, uh, I, I can only speak to how we've always done things in Ward 7, but I'm sure it's similar in other wards that, as the night goes on after that eight o'clock hour and we're working through the write-ins and we're working through the hand count ballots that we have to do, we, we reduce our footprint and we pare down. And so as we're getting 
less people on the tables and less hands on the ballots. It's up to the moderator's discretion uh -huh. to go, you know, Ben, you can leave for the night. Ernest, you can leave for the night. <coughs> and, you know, as long as they're recording the time now with that hourly pay, that should really make that a non-issue to me. Um, the final thing that I had, and it's actually a question for City Clerk Healy that I'm really kicking myself now for not bringing up during the weeks and weeks of discussion that we had on this. <laughs> but oftentimes in Ward 7, and I'm sure in other wards, we have ballot inspectors sign up and um, they decline to be paid. Um, if with us going to an hourly rate for those folks, is that going to create an issue that you foresee? City Clerk. No. So on here on this sheet is the amount that we're budgeting to be paid so if you do have people that are willing to um, spend the day or spend a few hours at the polling location <coughs> and not be paid that wouldn't change anything on here um, you're not the only ward that has some of these um, volunteers um, we submit the names to payroll and I try to track I go in and I make sure that they have an ID number, and the ones that don't, um, payroll starts to reach out to, and, and city clerk's office starts to reach out to, if they're not marked as not wanting pay, and and sometimes what happens is they say they, they just didn't they didn't come in to do the paperwork because they're not looking for pay. So once they say that, once we have a statement from them <clears throat> saying that they don't wish to be paid, um, that's all we need on on that. Great. Okay. And, and that's really just my final point is that th those people are out there in probably all nine wards. And, you know, I mean, you, you can kind of look at that as a budgetary win, but that kind of looks, the way I look at it is sort of my final word on the matter, which is ir irrespective of what numbers are on this entire package, I can guarantee you that anybody that signs up for it is not doing it for the money. And that's really what the focus is here. All right, motion I, on the floor is for fun. Oh, go ahead. I just have one more quick thing. <laughs> So City Clerk. what I've always done um, with election, with people that are questioning elections or, you know, the counting at the end, the tallying, is we ask them to come and actually work at the polling location. So anyone out there that might be watching this Nashua resident, if you're questioning results in past elections, you want to see the process, uh, sign up uh, to help on election day. And we can put you in a role where you're counting at the end of the night. You're doing, taking part in the tallying, so you can actually see <coughs> everything that's going on. This past election, I spent the majority of the day at Ward Two because they are a little short-staffed. In kind of what I've trained at that location, is you know when you're doing different tasks, just announce what you're doing to the public to to make it more transparent. When you're opening the absentee ballots at the end of the night when we were looking for the write-ins and we were making different piles. We're putting this in this pile right now because it's a vote for this person and it's a vote, we're just separating it. So I've tried to stress the transparency to the, the poll workers, but still anyone that's questioning the process, um, we always need more help on election day. So reach out to the city clerk's office um, and then I can direct you to that moderator to actually sign up for a position or um, doing the voter registration, we take in the names and we submit it to the to the registrars. So anyone that is interested, that's a good way to you know kind of see the full process. Motion is for to recommend final passage. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> that motion passes. Thank you. Thank you for being here, so to click. All right, tabled in committee. It is none. Uh, we're going into public comment. Is it, if you are here and would like to speak to the members of the committee, please come to the podium, state your name and address, and you'll have three minutes to give testimony. Hi. <clears throat> My name is Brad Russo, 113 East Hobart. Thank you for taking the time with me. <clears throat> Excuse me. The first thing I want to ask is, what is the third flag out front? I know the Hellenic flag and the, I know the American flag. There was a black and white flag out there yesterday. Blue and white? The Greek flag? Not the Greek flag, Hellenic. On the other side, there was a black and white half and half. If you don't know, you don't know. <clears throat> no one knows? I believe 
that a person making public comment uh, at our last alderman meeting, uh, Ms. Scare, if I recall, was announcing that her church would be putting their flag up. Well, it was I, don't, a, I don't think it was well attended. So <clears> I it was Easter. <clears throat> okay, thanks. And I came up, it's going to be real quick. You're not going to get three minutes for me. Don't hold your breath. <clears throat> See, I have a very dry throat, and I'm an old man. and play the Great. violins, and I'm ready for it. Uh, the first thing I want to say is thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, and thank you. And the other, I think, seven men and two women who aren't here that do the same job as you. Thank you. Thank you, Tim Sanoff, for being my moderator. Thank you for being my alderman. Everybody does a very good job. I've seen some um, responses in the last couple of weeks that have been a little bit down on you guys. I'm not down on you guys at all, at all. Ward 7, when you were the moderator, it was quiet, it was smooth. There was never a question, not once. I mean, I'm not there all the time. You get enough of me, I'm sure, five minutes when I vote. <laughs> But the other thing I wanted to say is, when I talked about people downing things, and I think we probably know who the people are for the most part, I understand the issue with, is it Arrow Lane or some Archer Lane? Archer. There was some issue One with that. Minute. Before them, there were, I guess it was the number, the number of the last meeting I recall was five people. You all know who they are. And my point is, you guys do a good job. And I'm not saying this for any other reason than a lot of people feel like me. You guys do a good job for us. And for you guys to have your pay, or whatever you want to call it, your stipend, go to $9,000. What do you call it? 30 seconds. You're good. You have 30 seconds left. How many? 30 You're good. seconds. Go you got clean. That's all I'm going to need. In Lowell, they get 32000 to 37000 a year. In Lawrence, they get 32000 a year. In New York City, they get $148,500 a year to do the job that you do. Thank you. You all do a great job. And Tom. I look forward to you continuing doing a good job on Channel 6 or 16. I made it in three minutes. Bye. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Would anyone else like to give public comment? Seeing none, we will go to general discussion. Anything? Just one. Alderman Lopez. Uh, just want to bring up my usual um, priority that we have uh, Rich Lennon and um, Mary Lou Blaisdell coming up from Downtown Improvement Committee. That would be a great opportunity to find out about what Downtown Improvement Committee is, is doing. Um, likewise, Jennifer Annand, National Arts Commission, has asked us to let them present. So I think that would be something we could do if we're gonna interview people who are considered for those committees. I have put that question out to all of them and have heard crickets, but I am happy to follow back up. I know that that was a, a priority of the, this committee who has asked specifically, we made our list of what's been going on and who we'd like to hear from, but um, I am happy to ask again and see if we can get them in here. Alderman Senate, did you have something? Yeah, I just want to, um quickly uh, thank the committee for indulging my long-windedness tonight on um, this particular issue in regard to elections and election officials is something that I'm very passionate about. Um, I, I don't think you ever get into that and fully leave it one way or the other, so it's always something I'm going to have my eye on, so I really appreciate the robust discussion and the time tonight. Thank you. General discussion? Uh, no apology needed, Mr. Uh, Alderman Senate. Mm -hmm. And if you could invite your constituent to come back and <laughs> say good things about us. I, mean, I don't want my head to get, get too big. <laughs> we don't get that often. It was very nice. <laughs> um, anyone else? General discussion? Alderman Klee? Um, I, it, 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 to me, your, your short conversation <laughs> that you had um, was um, very poignant and very, very well spoken. And I, again, want to make it clear as to who the, the main sponsors were. And if it weren't for the fact that Alderman Senate had brought to my attention um, that we had not <laughs> increased their pay from 2016, um, this may not have had movement. But uh, once he mentioned that, um, I immediately started looking into it and speaking to the clerk and, and so on to get that increase. So um, you were a, a truly, truly the, uh, 
the I guess the linchpin to all of this happened. My head is going to get big. <laughs> <laughs> and and to, Ms., to Mr. Russo, who was here, um, we we'll all have big heads, and sometimes we need that. So. <laughs> Anyone else? I, I do have something to say, but I think it's probably remarked by the alderman. It would be less. Sure. Um, I'm just going to start in a general discussion. When you're chairing it, you don't always weigh in quite as much because you're trying to figure out what's going on. But I think this piece of legislation was really smart. It, it really pointed out the work that is done at our elections every year and it's hard work and it's people who are there all day long and it's really important to make sure that they know how critical they are to democracy. So thank you to all of the prime sponsors for doing this work and working with um, City Clerk Healy to put this in front of us. All right, remarks by the Alderman. <coughs> alderman Clay. Uh, thank you. Um, to the, the member of the audience who is recording us, I just wanted to let him know that this meeting is on YouTube and, on, and there's a link to it on the city where you can watch it all. I, I encourage you to do that, but just so that you can have a really good, clear, because um, you're probably not hearing the mics as well as if you watch it on YouTube or something to that, to that nature. <coughs> um, it might, might just kind of help you. And you can take snippets of that as well. I've done it um, myself. Um, but just in also in general, um, in, in my remarks, I want to say that um, my fellow um, colleagues on this committee, allowing me and indulging me to speak as long as I do and as often as I do, I truly do appreciate it. I know I make jokes about it, but I know sometimes we all want to get home and I'm continuing this conversation. So I apologize for that, but thank you for indulging me. Sometimes it's difficult for me to get my thoughts together and I um and ah, um, but you've all been great, so thank you. Alderman Lopez. Uh, this Sunday is the National Soup Kitchen Road Race. Uh, if anybody's interested in that, uh, check out their page, NSK, nsks.org. Um, I am also organizing the Tree Streets Block Party. So if anybody's interested in volunteering for that, helping organize, if you want to bring your organization to it, uh, feel free to reach out to me. Great. I will just say to Alderman Clee that it's not an indulgence. You work hard on this stuff, and you're passionate about it, and you should have the opportunity to speak about the work that you're doing. Thank you. <clears throat> Give yourself some credit there. And that is all I have. Do I have a motion? Alderman Clements. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Uh, the motion is to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Am I not opposed tonight? All right. And that means we are closed at 8.07. Thank you so much, everyone. Mm-hmm. <laughs>